Hello and welcome back to JBCTR. Now, if you've watched this channel since I got the GR, you'll remember when I reviewed the stereo in this, I was less than favourable. They just sound tinny and a, yeah, a bit, bit, bit rubbish. So today we're going to do something about that. Now, today we're gonna break a lot of rules, uh, and that's because this car is a little bit of a predicament. So this car is awesome fun to drive, and one of the main reasons for that is because it's super light. On the flip side, if you want to do a really banging audio install, you wanna make the car really heavy and deaden it down so it sounds good, but then that's not gonna work for the GR. So today, I'm gonna try and do a lightweight stereo build in a GR. So I've set myself a couple of rules. Number one, the install must look as factory as possible so you wouldn't know it was there. And number two, I'm going to do my best not to splice any wires at all and we'll get into that in a moment. But for now, let me show you what my plan is. Now before we get into what we are doing today, a quick disclaimer. Clearly, this is a project that is going to involve automotive electronics. If there is anything you are unsure about, please consult professional advice before undertaking any DIY work on vehicle wiring. And do not take this video as professional advice. I am simply sharing my experiences of doing bits to my car at home. I think you'll find it interesting though. Right, enough of the safety stuff. Here's the plan. So this is the current setup. We have an OEM head unit feeding an amplifier located under the driver's seat. This thing does quite a lot, which I'll explain shortly. This amplifier then feeds four six and a half inch woofers and two tweeters in the front of the car. For our setup, we'll be ditching most of that. The factory amplifier will be replaced with a digital signal processor and amplifier combined. Our system will need to remove the engine sound enhancement and noise cancelling features, so removing the factory amplifier shouldn't cause any issues. It also enables us to install this setup without splicing any wires. I'll show you how later in this video. All speakers will then be replaced, starting with six and a half inch coaxials in the rear. This type of speaker allows us to combine both a woofer and a tweeter into one package. In the front, we'll be upgrading the woofers in the doors and the tweeters in the A pillars. I won't be installing a subwoofer at this stage in order to keep the weight down. Brand new cabling will then be run throughout to avoid splicing any factory wires. Now, as you can see, this is a very similar setup to stock. I'm just installing a better everything. Now, for the eagle-eyed amongst you, you may have noticed that there isn't actually a driver's seat in the GR, and that's because I've already started. Um, but before I show you what you missed, uh, I want to talk to you about this. So this is a little module that was underneath the driver's seat, and it's quite an impressive little box actually. So what this does is it takes a feed from the head unit with all your speaker noises in it and then it adds to that your engine sound enhancement and also your noise cancelling stuff. Uh, so it's a very clever box but we've had to turn all of that off because it doesn't really play very nicely with an aftermarket stereo. So if we take the noise cancelling for example what the noise cancelling does is it listens in the cabin for any resonance from the engine and it plays the opposite frequency through the speakers so it's nice and quiet for you as passengers. But unfortunately, when you upgrade the speakers, the frequency they use to sort of drown out the, the other one and neutralise it actually becomes overpowering. And if you're also using the same speakers to play music, it starts to get a bit messy. So unfortunately, this has to go I've had a look at the wiring on a, the Toyota Tech website, which is viewable if you pay by the hour, and I highly recommend it because it's very interesting. Um, and from what I can see from this, we shouldn't have any issues by removing it completely, and that also makes the wiring for the new amp a little bit easier. And uh, I'll show you what I mean at the end of this montage. So the install started by removing everything in the rear of the car, the boot floor, the rear seats, and the plastics. The 
The driver's seat was also removed to make access easier to the cabling underneath. Before we start anything relating to the electrics, it's very important that we remove the negative terminal of the battery. I like to wrap it in something non-conductive to ensure that it definitely doesn't touch the terminal by accident. The first job was to start the wiring for the amp. Now luckily there is a free terminal on the battery ready for the amplifier wiring. I just had to supply my own nut. I then used some sticky foam to mount the fuse holder somewhere out of the way. Harness tape was used to secure the power cable to an existing cable run. I found the rear washer tube running a near perfect route for my power cable. Once the cable was by the driver's seat, I just needed to pull the excess through. The ground wire can then be attached to an existing bolt nearby. The amplifier will also need a remote cable to tell it when it needs to turn on. This needs to be fed by an ignition switch live, the same as my dash cam. As I didn't want to splice any of the factory wiring, I decided to take a feed off my aftermarket dash cam wiring. I did this by removing the bullet connector and recrimping a new connector in its place with both the dash cam cabling and my new remote wire attached. The remote wire was then fed right the way around the vehicle, following the same path as the power cable. Now getting signal from the OEM head unit is tough. I needed to tap into the factory harness, but seeing as I didn't want to splice any factory wires, some bodgery was needed. I found that the metal used in 16 gauge fork connectors was thick enough to replicate a factory pin used by the OEM amplifier. Unfortunately, I couldn't crimp the 20 gauge wires from the aftermarket amplifier onto these, so some soldering was needed. The pins were then bent into shape so they could fit next to one another inside the factory plug that used to feed the OEM amplifier. Now I know it's not pretty, but this should work. The pin layout of this plug is available within Toyota's technical documentation, which I mentioned earlier. Lastly, we need to connect up our remote wire for the amp, I then cleaned the work area and tidied up the harnesses we'd made. Now I'm going to be keeping an eye on weight throughout this build, so here is the amp we've removed which comes in at just under 1 kilo, and this is the amp going in, nearly twice the weight. Okay, so that is the amp now in, it's got power, it's got inputs, and now we need to plug it into the computer to configure those inputs. Now you do this before you plug in the speakers because obviously it's not configured to run the speakers at the moment and therefore you risk damaging them. So now is the ideal opportunity to do the input configuration and also check if my uh, bodgy solution to not splicing wires is actually working. So uh, I've got my laptop, here it is. And unfortunately, the Audison software doesn't run on a Mac. And that's very annoying because the only PC I have is a desktop which calls for only one thing. And after that debacle, it was time to begin the tests, which Audison say you should do with the engine running, which is easier said than done when you don't have a driver's seat. Okay, so hopefully you can hear me over the sound of the car exhaust, um, but this is the Audison software. Uh, and essentially, all you gotta do is tell it which inputs are coming in on which port, so it can then work its magic. And then a bit later on, we can then configure which outputs go to which speaker, uh, and then we should be good to have a listen. But this whole setup is a little bit ridiculous. Um, yeah, I don't know why they can't offer it for Mac, but never mind, here we go. Now, this bit here, is a massive cause for celebration. Uh, because if I'm honest, I wasn't really sure if my little bodge of taking the feeds out of the pins was actually gonna work. But as you can see here, all channels have come back green, which means we've got a solid high level input going into the amp. And that now means we're in the realms of aftermarket and touch wood, it should now be plain sailing because that was the most tricky part. So um, yeah, well happy. Now, this process is really cool. Uh, so it's just called de-equalization. And what it's doing is we're playing pink noise into the amplifier that obviously you can't hear because all the speakers are disconnected. But the amplifier is hearing it, and it's going through each channel and uh, working out 
what EQ is applied to those channels by the stock stereo, despite everything being currently configured as being flat. And as you can see, it's finding quite some variation. So what it's going to do is flatten that curve, and then that then allows us to modify it as to how we like to make it sound the best in the car. And the last part of the setup process is to tell the amp which speakers are going to be connected to which outputs so it knows what kind of output to put to it. So for example, the tweeters are going to be on port one, I think, um, which means they need a high pass on them because we're not using the crossovers and effectively this amp is the crossover. So we need to configure it to be that crossover. So um, yeah, let's do that, get it finished up, turn the car off and we can actually start fitting some speakers then. Right, so now my rings are in the middle of being painted and they're currently drying, so I can turn my attention to sound deadening. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, sound deadening is a bit of a, an issue for this car because I'm trying to keep it light, but sound deadening is literally just chucking weight at the car to stop it from resonating. So I need some because I don't want it to resonate, but I don't want to weigh the car down. So I've gone for a product called Dynamat Extreme. This is kind of quite popular if I'm honest it's probably the most popular brand out there um, this is their extreme version which apparently is lighter and actually this does feel quite lightweight and for the rears as the speakers I'm putting in are not as powerful as the fronts I'm just going to use one sheet between both sides and that's probably about right actually because now I've removed the panel amazingly Toyota actually have some sound deadening behind here I was under the impression that they didn't have any in this car, so uh, that's quite cool to see. So we'll get that rollered on. The other bit I'm going to do in the rears uh, is these fast ring things. So I actually bought these for the front, but as part of this kit, um, there is a sort of backing pad. Uh, and I'm going to use a slightly different backing pad in the front, which we'll cover when we do them. So uh, I'm going to use this backing pad to go in here, and that will stop the sort of back blast from the speaker resonating the outside and um yeah it should be good so i'm going to get that applied and then by the time that's applied hopefully my rings will be dry and then we can start wiring Right then, so that is everything dynamated. And actually in the car, there wasn't much space to actually put it on. Uh, so this metal bit here is kind of suspended. So I figured that would probably resonate like crazy. So I've actually done both sides of this in all the areas I can and then left space for the speaker ring. Um, and otherwise I've just used the rest up on here. And my partner has kindly done the cards that can go over the top from the inside. And I must admit hers is a lot neater than mine but I think we're pretty much ready to get the speakers in now. That's it, the rears are in and they're looking really good actually. Um, turned out a lot better than I thought. I mean, the black paint was basically just to hide any kind of bodge jobs for the 
the rack, but I think it's turned out pretty well. Um, the only thing I'm not that happy about really is the routing for the cabling over there, because I've had to basically go on the back and that follows the power line. And strictly speaking, you shouldn't have your signal cables next to your power line because you might get interference, but there just wasn't another option. So uh, that's the only bit that I'm not that happy with, but overall, I think it's a pretty good job actually. So uh, I'm gonna turn it on and test that the rears are now working uh, and then we can start building the back. have it that is the first half done so we've installed the amplifier and done the two speakers in the rear and to get all that done because it is a lot of work um, in just over a day you know I'm quite pleased with myself but I have realized that we've gone through the entire day and I haven't actually told you what we've installed so if you've made it this far in the video I thought I should let you know and here they are as, as if by magic um, here is the Audison processor amplifier that we put in today it is the f 8.9 bit now that 8.9 bit amplifier i actually purchased before this one um, it's been out a little while and everyone said that it was great the processing software was awesome but it lacked a bit of power so this is a slightly more recent release by audison and forza is actually italian for power um, and this produces over double that of the original 8.9 so this should give us plenty of bases and volume and all that good stuff and i'm really looking forward to getting it programmed and hooked up and all that the rears are less exciting if i'm honest so these are pretty much mid-range audison um it's the apx 6.5 210 watt and they are actually a considerable upgrade on the stock i mean it's very noticeable but these are sort of middle of the road in terms of audio file price range and the reason I put them in was to kind of keep that surround sound feel but without spending too much so yeah the, the main the main party should we say will be up front which we'll do tomorrow and uh, I think that's it but for now I'm pretty tired so I will do a part two when we install the woofers the tweeters and then we get it all programmed up so it sounds awesome um, and in the meantime uh, if you enjoyed it Give it a thumbs up if you want to see more of me, the Yaris, other car content, feel free to subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one. I, I, I